Hi, and welcome back to my channel, where I'm going to cover the Ranger's Horizon Walker class specialization from Xenothar's Guide to Everything, providing a brief description of the subclass, as well as explain and set up the various features gained. The Horizon Walkers are Rangers who specialize in dealing with extra-dimensional worlds and creatures, such that they will seek out those connections to the material plane and watch over them to ensure that evil creatures can't use them as gateways. They also freely travel through the inner and outer planes, seeking out the creatures who have harmed others and were thus chased back through whatever portal they came through. As a result, Horizon Walkers have friends in high places. Specifically, any planar creature that is good and values life can call these rangers friends, and vice versa. Rangers get to choose their class specialization at level 3, so you will have time to consider what subclass you wish to take before you get to level 3 but you'll want to pay attention to those class specializations because some can have different stat requirements like we have found with other classes. However, let's level our current ranger up so we can start taking a look at their features that they will be gaining. And this is a Horizon Walker here. Much like the Gloom Stalker, the first feature your character is going to gain are some archetypical spells specific to the class specialization and are designed to complement your character's planar capabilities. The feature is called Horizon Walker Spells, and it gives your character a limited number of new spells they can use that won't count against your character's prepared spells list. Much like other classes that are given spells through features, these spells will always be available to your character, and they will learn these new spells at levels 3, 5, 9, 13, and finally at level 17. And the first spell your character is going to learn is Protection from Evil and Good. While I won't go over the spell itself, I will show you how to make it accessible to your character, as well as set up a spell group so that you can keep these spells separate from the rest of your spells your character can learn. So the first thing we will want to do is drag and drop this Protection from Evil and Good onto our character spell sheet, or Actions tab. And what will happen is, is it will drop into your typical spells location, so spells level 1. That's the primary spells group that always gets created whenever you drop your first spell into place. In this case, we already had Cure Wounds and Hunter's Mark, so we just merged it in with that. What we actually want to do is call this Horizon Walker Spells. And what that will now do is it will create a brand new spell group, or actually correction, it will create an initial power group that we can then set up as a spell group. And we do that by toggling this little sword icon so that it is a spell book. We're also going to want to update this to use Wisdom in all cases because that is what this particular subclass happens to use. So it does align with the typical Ranger in relation to that particular stat. Now the reason we have done this is because when we drag Misty Step onto the character sheet, it's now going to create a separate spell group that is linked to this particular spell group. So we will then have Horizon Walker Spells level 2 here as opposed to just the level 1. It won't link it to the spells grouping down here. These are two separate spell groups, so if I make adjustments in this particular spell group, it will not make adjustments inside of this. You can see here that we only have base and base, whereas up here we have whiz, whiz, and whiz for wisdom. The last thing we're going to want to do, and this is just a safety check, if you will, is to ensure that this is always prepared. And the reason we want to do that is because in some cases, when you're under your combat and actions setup, if you will, inside of your character sheet, some of these spells will simply not show up if they're not tagged as prepared. In our case, all of these spells are, so they always show up. And the reason why we also wanted this to be a spell group is because when we burn through all of our spell slots, we want those spells to go away. And in theory, that is the only time your Horizon Walker spells will be unavailable, is when you no longer have any spell slots to use. And yes, you can use higher level spell slots to cast these lower level spells as well, if you so choose to do so, and the spell allows it. Another feature your character is going to gain at level 3 is related to your character's ability to see portals, and it's called Detect Portal. Your character will be able to use this freely outside of a combat scenario, but if your character does use it during combat, they will make use of an action to be able to detect the location of portals within one mile of where your character currently stands, regardless of if you are on the surface or underground. Now, that doesn't mean that if you're two miles down below the surface of whatever world your campaign is running through, say in the Underdark in Faerun, you will not pick up a portal 
on the surface. You will only be able to pick up any portals that happen to be within a spherical radius of one mile of where your character is. It doesn't matter whether it's in a vertical, diagonal, or horizontal location from your current position. You will know where it is. And you will learn a couple of things. First off, you'll learn the direction the portal is in. And you will also learn exactly how far away it is from you, as long as you are within that one mile limitation. So if it's, say, a thousand feet away from you, you will know it's a thousand feet in the, say, northeast direction of where your character currently stands. And if there's a vertical elevation involved, you will also know how high up you have to go in order to get to it. But this feature does have one other limitation. You will only be able to use this feature once per short or long rest, meaning that your character will have to complete a short or long rest in order for them to be able to use this again. So normally this wouldn't have been a feature that you would have had to have added to your actions tab as a result. But because there is now a usage limitation, we definitely need to do that. So what I'm going to do is drag and drop this onto our character sheet. It's going to create a new power group, if you will. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to rename that to be Horizon Walker. And that's just for organizational sake. You can put it wherever you want. I then want to set this up to have one rest usage. And what this means is, is that when you set this to rest, it will allow your character to complete a short or a long rest to recover any spent uses of this particular feature. If it was just left at daily, then your character would be required to complete a long rest in order to be able to regain those uses. But in this case, this feature allows us a short or a long rest in order to do that. The final feature your character will gain at level 3 is called a Planar Warrior, and it will allow you to use your character's knowledge of the Planar Verses to draw on its energy and be able to use that for additional damage, and to change the type of damage of the next weapon attack that your character does. As a bonus action, your character can target any creature within 30 feet of where your character stands, and draw on the energy of the multiverse to use it to convert the damage type of the attack against the creature. And in this particular case, when you convert that weapon's damage, it will convert it to be using force damage as opposed to its normal damage. So if it's a mace, for example, typically that would do bludgeoning damage. But when you make use of this feature, you'll convert that bludgeoning damage into force damage. At the time you choose to use this feature, the character or creature that you're targeting has to be within 30 feet of you. But if you then target that creature, say, two turns later, the next weapon attack against that particular creature will have that damage conversion done to it. So at that particular point, if the creature has moved out of your normal 30-foot range for this particular feature and is now, say, 60 feet, i.e. within range of a bow or a crossbow, you can still use that weapon and attack that particular creature because the limitation is, is that once you've activated it, that quote-unquote flag, if you will, is there so that the next attack you do against that particular creature, it will convert the damage. It doesn't matter whether it's a ranged weapon or a melee-based attack. The damage type the weapon will do is obviously force damage, but you will also gain an additional 1d8 points of force damage on top of the weapon's normal damage. And when your character reaches level 11, this will increase to 2d8 points of damage. So let's go ahead and set this up. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drop that into place, and I have no idea why that got set to minus one. That should just be a one. There is no usage limitation on this, except for the fact that when you choose the creature, the next attack you do against that particular creature will have this particular damage, but then you can do it again later. So, I want to move that particular group. No, I want it to here. Now, the good news for us is that the damage roll is already set up for us. We don't have to do anything else, just the organization of the group that we want to put it in. So I just made a realization on something that we need to adjust, and I'm noticing this much later in the recording situation, so this might show up a little bit of out of order. In relation to Planar Warrior, when you do the extra damage and you're converting the damage type of your weapon into force damage, Let's say, for example, I use this longbow. By default, it uses piercing damage. Well, I do 1d8 plus 4 points of piercing damage in this particular case. What I should do is actually add a damage roll here. And I want to set up that damage roll to be the 1d8 die. So i got to make a spot for it first. And then go ahead and add in the bonus. Now, where's this bonus coming in from? It's most likely going to be your dexterity. So let's see what happens. Yeah, it was dexterity. 
So I'm going to bring this around until we get to dexterity again, and I'm going to get rid of that bonus. That gives us our plus four. I also want to set up the damage type to be force. And here's why I'm going to do that. Let's say, for example, I have now attacked this white dragon, and I've hit. We'll argue that I've rolled and hit a 20 or 19 or whatever. It doesn't matter. I've hit that dragon. The way this is going to work is instead of you rolling this damage here, you are actually going to click this and roll that damage. Almost. I missed a step. You need to ensure that this damage effect is there first. So what you want to do is once you've hit the target, you add the damage effect, and then you roll the damage, and it will roll all three dice. And then the total amount of damage dealt will be a combination of both this bonus roll and the damage that you would have done. The damage here is going to be equal to whatever weapon you're using. So if you're using a short sword, then you're probably going to want to preload your 1d6 plus 4 here as force damage, because it doesn't matter whether it's a ranged weapon or a melee weapon that you change that damage type on. Now the good news for you here as the player is you can do this every single turn if you so choose to. You can use your bonus action first, which means you could designate that adult white dragon as your quote-unquote planner warrior target to be able to add that additional damage to the overall dice roll. Now, normally, prior to level 11, you would only do 1d8 force damage. After level 11, or once you hit level 11, you'll be doing 2d8, which is why I have 2d8 here, because this character is already past level 11. All you have to do is tell the dungeon master that you're using this as your bonus action, and as long as your character is within 30 feet of the actual dragon, you can target that particular dragon for this purpose. So the next turn comes around, my character moves in to range, 30 foot range of the dragon, says, you're my target. I then make my next attack roll, and let's see if I hit just for kicks. Nope, that will definitely be a miss. Let's go for a hit. Okay, that's going to be a hit. So now what I do is I once again, I apply the effect, roll the damage. It does the damage. My character moves back 15 feet if, let's say, I'm bouncing in and out of range. That's how you can make use of this particular feature. When your character reaches level 5, you will be able to drag the Misty Step spell onto your character's actions tab. And as long as you drop it within the Horizon Walkers spell group, it will automatically create a new group with the same name, just an indication that it is now containing level 2 spells. That's the reason why we set this up. The other thing we have to do is just to make sure that it is prepared so that it will, in fact, show up when you're in a combat action scenario. And that way, whenever you have spell slots available, you will also have your spells available. At Ranger level 7, your character will gain access to the Ethereal spell feature, which will allow them to be able to make use of a free casting of the Etherealness spell itself. There is a reduced duration in that your character can step through to the Ethereal plane, but will return to the Material plane at the end of the current turn. It won't use a spell slot, hence the free casting, but it does burn a use of this particular feature in that your character will need to complete a short or long rest in order to be able to regain that use. So you get one use, at which point you can cast this particular spell, and then you have to complete that rest in order to regain the use that you just did. So let's go ahead and drag and drop this onto our character's actions tab, and then copy in the appropriate group name here to organize it into the rest of our group. We will also want to flip this to preparation and set this up as a one rest, because we get to use it even after we complete a short rest. At ranger level 9, we are gaining access to the haste spell, so we'll want to make sure that we simply drag and drop this into the existing spell group that we have for our Horizon Walker spells, and then go through and ensure that it is set up and ready for use. And it looks like everything else about it is all set up and ready to go. So all we have to do is that, and it's ready for our character to actually go through and make use of. At Ranger level 11, the first thing we are going to want to do is ensure that we go through and update the amount of damage our Planar Warrior skill is doing, or feature. You simply do that by clicking on this magnifying glass here, gra uh, navigating down here until you get to this particular damage entry, and then simply update that to be 2d8 force. You don't have to change anything else. And with that adjustment, we have now made the improvement that this particular feature gains at level 11. Also at Ranger level 11, your character is going to gain the Distant Strike feature, which gives your character an instant 
limited range teleport, as well as the means to attack a third creature under the right circumstances. During combat, as your character is making an attack action, they can teleport up to 10 feet in any direction to a spot that is currently unoccupied. And due to the way that the nature of this particular teleportation is working, I would argue that this would invalidate any attacks of opportunity that could have otherwise been made against your character while making this particular jump. In this particular case, the teleportation is instant. It happens way earlier than anybody can actually go through and react. So this implies that as a character standing next to a creature, if you teleport your character to another location that is, say, 10 feet away from that particular creature, you're doing it so quickly that they cannot react to that particular scenario. However, there is one case where, where I would argue it is possible to do. I would argue that if you are going up against an opponent that might be hasted or is naturally faster than one might would consider normal, i.e. supernaturally faster, then in those two cases, there would be an attack of opportunity that could be executed. But for all other conditions, I don't think the attack of opportunity would be the appropriate action that a DM would take in this particular case. Some DMs would argue against that, but those are my arguments as to why I think it wouldn't necessarily happen right away. It would have to be very specific conditions with additional hastening in, cr in place, if you will, in order for that creature to be able to respond. Now, this next portion of the feature is going to be a bit tricky in that if your character is able to attack two different creatures at the same time, you are able to be granted a free attack against a third creature. But this is only going to come into play if you happen to have the means to attack multiple times in the first place. Now, the good news for your character here is that as a level 11 ranger, you should already have access to the extra attack ability, which means you already have the ability to attack two creatures. And there is one thing that I want to clarify in relation to the way that this feature works. When you engage a creature or a set of creatures, you can be that 10 foot distance away from that particular creature that you're going to attack initially. So you could theoretically identify the target you're going for, who happens to be within 10 feet of your character, teleport up against that particular character's location or creature's location, make your attack and then teleport to your second creature that happens to be within that 10-foot reach and make an attack against that creature. The good news here is because you've now attacked two separate creatures, you could create a third teleport to another creature, and it cannot be one you've already attacked, and make an attack against that particular creature. That is your third attack or your free attack. And yes, that means you could theoretically teleport up to three times within a single combat encounter or combat round in order to execute those attacks. And another point of clarification that I want to make there is as follows. If your character is 15 feet away from your first target, that's a good thing because you only have to teleport 10 feet to be able to put them within reach of melee-based weapons. You see what I'm saying there? So you could teleport to a creature that's 15 feet away from you but the location you're jumping to is 10 feet away from your current location. And then you can bounce around the battlefield for two additional teleports against two separate different creatures, as long as that location that you're teleporting to is within 10 feet of your starting point. Those creatures can be 15 feet away from your character in all three of those scenarios. Now, the good news here for you is that there is no usage limitation. It's not something that you can use and then have to complete a long rest for. You can literally use this every single turn if you so chose to. The only requirement is that you have to be making an attack action, and that's within a capital A on the word attack. That means that that's the overall rounds attack action, not a single attack with a weapon. But that also means we do not need to add this to our actions tab because it's not something that you need to track the uses of. How this is going to work is going to be as follows. Let's say that this adult white dragon is 15 feet away from my ranger, meaning that if I jump, 10 feet towards it, it will put me in reach, or it will put it in reach. Within reach of that spot would be the vampire in the sense that let's say that this vampire is within 15 feet of where I'm going to jump in order to attack the adult white dragon. And then finally, let's say that the ape is within 15 feet of where I'm going to land to attack the vampire. Here's how this would work. First, my character would move into place and target the adult white dragon. They would then make their attack roll. I'm just going to use a sword for this particular example. Excellent. I hit. I roll my damage. 
Okay, I am now going to untarget the dragon, target the vampire, because my character now, quote-unquote, teleports into reach of the vampire. I'm then going to make my next attack roll. In this case, I hit, I roll damage. Partially resisted, but whatever. Now, I'm going to target the ape and untarget the vampire, because I'm now teleporting to a spot that will give me access to the ape. I then make my next attack roll. That's still a hit. I roll my damage. And it doesn't matter whether it's a melee or ranged based weapon. You could theoretically use this feature to bounce around, moving 10 feet about to put your bow in range in order to make your attacks. And yes, that does mean that you would be able to make use of a third attack with your longbow as long as you attacked two separate creatures. And you'll notice that I attacked three separate creatures when I did the example. That's the conditions at which point you would get that one extra free attack. If, however, I simply used my teleportation to jump into reach of this particular white dragon and then made my two attack attacks against it, I would not be able to attack another creature. Those would be my attacks. I'd be nullifying the remaining portion of this particular feature. So I just wanted to make sure that that was clear. At character level 13, you will now be able to add the banishment spell to your character sheet. I'm going to drop that into place, and then I'm simply going to make sure that it is prepared. And as we can see, we now have a fourth level spell group here that contains our banishment spell, and it's still under the Horizon Walker spells because that's the group that I've been dragging these spells into. So it's ready for us to use at this point. At Ranger level 15, your character is going to gain the Spectral Defense feature, which allows you to negate half the damage of a single attack by making use of a reaction. The attack, however, has to be against your own character. It cannot be used to intercept an attack against another character. But this means that your character can step into the ethereal plane as the damage is being applied, even if you've been hit, and void out half the damage as a result of that. As this is a reaction, you won't be able to do it again until the next turn, though. This will be a relatively easy feature to go through and set up. All we have to do is copy our power group into place, make sure that we have that there, and then go ahead and add a new effect to this. And the effect that we want is available on the Fantasy Grounds wiki, and specifically the effects page that I've linked in the description below. So we're going to call this Spectral Defense. Then I'm simply going to drop that into place through a copy that I had done earlier. You'll have to manually add in this resist colon part, but all of these damage types come readily available from that effects page, and you just simply have to dra copy them and paste them into here. The last thing we need to do is make sure that this is set up on your character and that it expires on the next roll, so that the next time somebody does damage to your character, it will resist the damage and then the effect drops off. So let's say that this adult white dragon here is going to attack the ranger. They already have the action token, and okay, the ranger is now attacked, or targeted, I should say. I'm going to make my attack roll, and that is going to be a hit. Now, before that damage is rolled, I can tell the dungeon master I'm going to use a reaction to set this up. Now, the good news here is because this is a reaction, normally you would have to go through and set up a specific scenario where a reaction would get triggered. However, in this particular case, because you're being granted the ability to, to make use of a reaction through this for a feature, what you're actually calling on is the feature itself, not the fact that you're doing a reaction. So it gives you the ability to add this resistance at any point in time throughout a combat situation, not just because you've specified the conditions to a reaction, which would normally be the case. Now, when the damage is done, we should see a res partially resisted here, which we do. Excellent. That means that this particular feature is working the way that we want it to, and the effects have gone away after the dragon did their damage. Now, the final thing that your character is going to be able to gain is the last spell when they hit level 17 of the Horizon Walker spells grouping here. In this case, it's Teleportation Circle. I'm just simply going to pop this open, expand out one of these particular groups here, drop this into place, and now we have our fifth level spell, Teleportation Circle. And that finishes off all of the spells we're going to learn from this particular feature. The last thing I have to do is just make sure that it is prepared so that it will always be there whenever we have spell slots.
And keep in mind that these spells will only work at the spell level you're casting them on. So v Misty Step here, you have to use a second level spell slot or higher in order to cast that particular spell if it allows for a higher level spell to be able to use for that. Some DMs will rule that if it doesn't specify that it would use a higher level spell slot, then you can't actually use a higher level spell slot to burn that spell. As I've said before, I've always loved the idea of the Ranger, so it's my favorite class to play. But the subclass adds a whole new realm, uh, well, if you'll excuse the pun there, to the list of the available Ranger options. It's definitely an interesting take on having the Ranger essentially become a planeswalker and act as a guardian for the material plane on top of the other planes of existence. And some of the features that are available with this particular subclass are extremely powerful and can very badly be abused. But I still like the overall concept of this particular class. However, this does bring us to the end of this video. I hope you found it useful and informative, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. I wish to thank you for taking the time to watch this particular video. I hope you found it informative and useful to familiarizing yourself with Fantasy Grounds in general, and that you had fun in the process. If you found the video useful and you liked the content of the particular video, go ahead and click that like button to let me know. And if you have any questions specific to the topic covered by this particular video, or just have some comments in general, please feel free to post something in the comments section. I will do my best to respond to any questions that are asked. Additionally, I do release content quite regularly, and it's generally specific to Fantasy Grounds or 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons at this time. So if you'd like to be notified when new videos come out, go ahead and subscribe and click the notification bell to ensure that notification is sent to you when I release a new video.